The piece I published this morning over at uh, Hartman Report, and it's also uh, uh, trending, as it were, over on Daily Kos, is, uh, dot com is why is America the only developed nation with no right to health care? And it's, it's a, a very short summary of a few of the things that I learned when I was, last year, when I was writing uh, this book that'll be out in the next month or three, uh, titled the, uh, the Hidden History of American Healthcare. It's why it'll be my newest book in the series. And there are fundamentally two reasons why we don't have an American healthcare system uh, uh, that, that functions and that covers everybody in the country and why there's no absolute right to health care in the United States compared with every other country. First of all, how bad it is, right? Let's, let's just define that. The United States spends 17% of GDP on health care. 17% of all the dollars spent in our economy are going to, to health care right now. It is 11% or in the neighborhood plus or minus a half a percent of 11% in Switzerland, Germany, France, Sweden, and Japan. And it is between 9.3 and 10%, 10.5% in Canada, Denmark, Belgium, Austria, Norway, Netherlands, United Kingdom, New Zealand, and Australia. All of them are at 11% or below. We are 17% of GDP. 22% of all our taxable payroll right now is healthcare premiums. Let that one sink in. We are literally the only developed country that has this giant blood-sucking tick attached to our backs of a for-profit health insurance industry. And how did we get here? Well, it turns out that the early opposition from more than 100 years ago to health care for all, I mean, it's not, it's not like this is something that we haven't tried. Teddy Roosevelt tried it. Franklin Roosevelt tried it. Harry Truman tried it. Jack Kennedy tried it. Lyndon Johnson tried it. I'll play a clip of Jack Kennedy for you after the break. They all tried to do this. None of them could pull it off. And it's because back in the 1890s, in 1896, the same year that the Supreme Court made America an apartheid, uh, formally, officially, an apartheid country with the, with the Plessy versus Ferguson decision, that same year, a guy by the name of Frederick Hoffman published a book titled Race, Race Traits and Tendencies of the American Negro. And basically his argument, and he was the vice president of Prudential Insurance Company, his argument was that American African Americans were African Americans were so genetically inferior, both intellectually and physically, that if they were denied health care for just a couple of generations, they would all die out and it would solve the race problem in America. His book was one of the biggest bestsellers in 1896. His book was one of the most influential books at the turn of the last century. He testified before Congress. He was quoted by, by conservative politicians ad infinitum. And this is why all the southern states, to this day, I believe, refuse to even expand Medicaid. No, we can't have health care for those black people. You know, they'll just die out if we don't. Honest to God, his plan was to deny health care to black people. That was his solution to the so-called race problem in America. And that dance is still being done. So that's, that's half of it. The other half is the mind-boggling profits, like Dollar Bill McGuire, the, the former CEO of United Healthcare, who took one and a half billion dollars from his uh, time as CEO of that company. He had to pay back over 400 billion to avoid prosecution, but hey, he walked away a billionaire. This is, this is a, 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 a giant blood-sucking tick.